is an old friend. How are you doing? <laughs> nice to see you, man. I'm going to pull myself together for a second. <laughs> it's just the space triggers it. <laughs> All right, let's see. <laughs> let's get serious. People are here for something. That was your first mistake. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to sort of talk about something someone presented earlier. And this is just my humble opinion. It's not, it's not carved in any stone. But when I started coming to these type of talks, uh, let's say there's an approach where they talk about what we are quite a lot. Yeah? that you're the ever-present moment, that inherently there's nothing that's needed to be done or acquired or achieved or attained. Everything is perfect just as it is, which is a very nice-sounding thing, but the importance is how it's being heard, yeah? So what happens is the sense, the feeling of being a person will be the myth that goes up, that goes up first, that catches that message. So you'll get, a, you'll get the message that there is no person, but you'll hold it as a person. This is sort of a dilemma. The mental state will reinvigorate itself and catch this new novel idea that there's no Paul, but you'll catch it as the Paul. See? So it's not the message. It's what's hearing the message is the important thing. So... The way I see it, I, we always direct it to uh, what's hearing the message, not the message. Yeah? Because the message is sort of like that old thing I used to say quite a lot from it. It's an old Hindu story about the lion and the sheep. So you're at a meeting like this, and everyone is speaking about, you're a lion, you're a lion, you're a lion, you're a lion. And it sounds good to you, maybe. For some people, other people are confused, but some people get it. They, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a lion, I'm a lion. So here's the message. You're a lion, you're a lion, you're a lion. Here it comes, and you're in, total, you're in agreement with it. And then it hits the ears, which are formatted in a certain way, and it gets translated into, I can become like a lion. That's not the message. The message isn't that you're going to become like a lion. The message is, you're a lion. And of course, we're not talking about the four-legged animal, you know. It's, a, it's an example. It represents something. So you're a lion, you're a lion, you're a lion. Yeah, yeah, I like that idea. Spe especially if there's a feeling of being a sheep, you know. A sheep's getting its ass kicked a lot, getting made, used for a sweater every year, you know. It's so it gets this feeling that, man, I'd really like to be a lion, but I'm going to be a lion as a sheep, yeah. Because the sheep identity won't be noticed. So what greets all the good news that you ever hear is the bad news, in a sense. Yeah? Because it's now you that gets this, which is a very subtle idea that there is no person, but now the person will try to be a non-person. Yeah? So I'm like a self trying to be a non-self. And you see how weird it can get, you know what I mean? <laughs> because it's just another conceptual idea. Yes? It's been made into something. The message was being delivered, but it was made into something very quickly by the mitt or by the ear that heard it. Yeah? Because we are formatted. Our mental state is a format. It is not a natural state. It's It's... It's fabricated, it's reinforced, it's implied, it's supported all the time by what I would term selfing. So I'll, someone wanted me to make sure I explain some of the words I use, yeah? So I will. So selfing is a mental process that is 
there to support and to facilitate the identification as a self. So the feeling of being you is produced. Yeah? You didn't have it when you were seemingly a baby. For the first year or so of a baby, there was no you. And yet there was, a, there was actions going on, there was feelings have, being had, but there was no sense of being the feeler or the actor. And then a mental state developed, and that mental state, as its organizing principle to make sense out of what can't be made sense out of, be, became the center of the whole system. That there's a unit, a, a, a thing, and that thing is now prescribed or ascribed a lot of qualities it doesn't have. It's now what is the... See, when the seeing is going on, you are, there's the feeling you're the seer of it, Yeah. So the seeing is happening, but it produces a sense that you're the seer. A feeling happens, but there's the sense of being the feeler of it. There's hearing, but there's a sense I'm the hearer. Yeah? It's, a very, it's a very quick heist where living becomes an interpretation. So the conscious contact is happening. Yeah? It's like in recovery, they talk about conscious contact. I view it as the basis of life. It's consciousness and contact. Yes? So consciousness is seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. But the mental story says, I'm the seer, the hearer, the feeler, the taster, the toucher. So now, instead of being alive, we move up into a mental state called self-centeredness, which describes it perfectly. It's centered on this idea of being what? A long-lasting, independent, separate entity. That you are independent, that these are your thoughts, no one has them but you, your feelings are yours, and no one else feels like you do. <laughs> You're the only one who did those heinous things in life that a lot of people have done, but you did, by you doing it, it's somehow deemed to be very special. <laughs> because I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> so this sense of being you is produced and reinforced and implied. If you look at the language, just like, uh, you know, the knee got damaged while I was surfing, like in January. And so, but a casual way of saying is, hey, I, I hurt my knee. Like, I went in the water with a hammer, and I waited for just the right way, but I just hit myself in the knee. Like, I did it. It doesn't it sound like it. If you say it very nonchalantly, it sounds like I intended to hurt the knee. I hurt my knee today. You know what I mean? Well, like, I beat my child today. I hurt my knee. But I had nothing to do with it, really. It happened, and then there was a response. And then there was the mental reaction that I did it. Yeah? Now, the, mental, the response is what we're missing, because the emphasis is shifted onto the interpretation. So we're not, we're, we're not at the pulse of living. We're an, we're an afterthought. You're being remembered, right? That's what's going on. So this idea of selfing, just like the language, the language like... I remember I went back east a couple of years ago and I hadn't been there a while. My hair had grown. So when I went there, people were saying, oh, you're growing your hair. So I was saying, oh, yes, I'm doing a good job. A good job. <laughs> and, you know, I wanted to do better, so I joined a group of like-minded people and we got together and grew hair together and it, went, it grew faster. You know what I mean? So I keep going, you know, and i got to leave this meeting early because I've got to grow my hair. I forgot to grow it earlier today. You know? So it's really funny because it sounds like I have something to do with something I don't have anything to do with. I'm not growing my hair. I just, if I don't cut it, it grows. Yeah? But the language implies I have something to do with something I have nothing to do with quite a lot. We're using to know life from a, a system of thought and interpretation that implies that we're the subject, that we're the doer, that we're the haver. It's self-centered. And so all, all, the, all the thought system is being used, the, the selfing is using the thoughts to facilitate the bondage of self. Yeah? How does it do it? It precedes the word thought with my thought, which immediately changes its weight. You can travel pretty light with a thought, but when it becomes your thought, it's a different story. And we used to use a simple example, but I think it works well. Put the word money there on the board. Put the word health. Put the word uh, uh, relationships. Yeah? Now wait. 
based on where you think you are, it'll have a certain weight. If you don't have any money, then there'll be a, more weight on the money. Yeah. Now let's change the weight significantly by not changing money, health, and relationship. We're not. There's nothing to do with that. We're not going to change money, health, and relationship by changing those words. We're going to put a word before them: my money. It's usually different. I want all of you to have a lot of money, but not mine. I don't want you to have any of my money, but I want you all to have money, but not my money. Yeah? I hope you have a lot of time to do what you want, but not my time. You know, I'm not doing anything with you. I'm too busy, too important. Yeah? So the word my changes everything. And this is the sense of selfing. That's what's preceding every thought is the feeling. You're the thinker of it. Yeah, it proceed, It's like what's being held. A thought is noticed, and then the interpretation is I'm the thinker of it. A feeling is noticed, and the interpretation is I'm the feeler of it. Yeah, hearing is noticed. The interpretation is I'm the one who heard that. Yeah. So the emphasis is lost on the hearing, the seeing, the feeling, and the tasting, and it's moved to two polarities: what's been seen and who saw it. Yeah. Now you may see tons of different things. In, in every given day, but what's seeing it will always be the same, you. This is the bondage of self. It's not like you're bonded to a self, because that would mean it was a real thing. You're bondage of self. In other words, what your mind is entertaining is producing the bondage. It can't produce it. You're not bound to a thing like this chair. If I was bound to this chair, you could do it with a handcuff, Yeah. A handcuff would bind me to this chair, and now when I get up, the chair would go with me. Yeah? But there would be no point where I thought I was the chair. <laughs> I'd be very clear I'm not the chair, and if I could get out of it, I'd be free of the chair. Yeah? But this, this state of mental bondage is different. You're identifying yourself as the chair that wants to get out of the chair. <laughs> yeah? So the chair is trying to get out of the chair, and if it gets out of the chair, which will never be successful, what will it be but a chair? Yeah? <laughs> and therefore, it will be bound by the new solution it found, and it's going to on and on and on and on and on and on, and self will not get out of self. Yeah? Like a great master, Hoang Po, an old Chinese Zen master. It's a great book if you want to check it out. Old book uh, called The Teachings of Hoang Po by John Blofeld, the translation. And he says, you can't use mind to seek mind. You can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. You can't use light to seek light. Yeah? That's why. Why? Why is that? Because the mind is never going to know the mind. Because it is the mind. You see? The mind, all that we are, the big M, will never know itself because it would have to be an object to be known. And it's not. So, you're never going to use seeing to see the seer. You're never going to hear what's hearing. You're never going to really feel what's feeling. You're never going to taste what's tasting. It can't be known, felt, thought of, this or that, because it's not an object. It's the pure subjectivity, right now. So, you don't know it, you find out about it by knowing what you're not. And that's the approach this is. This approach is, forget about the platitudes about what we are, because it's what's hearing it that's more important. And if you're identified as a self, you're going to try to get enlightened. Yeah? And look at what that word enlightenment does now. It means cessation of all suffering, but the way it's being entertained is driving people crazy. I'm not enlightened. I should be enlightened. They're enlightened, which is the worst. <laughs> Jesus, I've gone to more meetings than them, and they're enlightened. Fuck. I've got to do more enlightening practices. You can't get what you are. It's not something that you can consume. You can't buy, achieve, attain what you already are. In a sense, driving in those directions is how we seemingly lose it. We don't lose it, but it will seemingly be so, which it means it will be appearing to be true to you. Yeah? So the you that you are will lose itself by looking for it. Period. End of story. There's no exemptions. There isn't a, oh, they dug up a 20,000-year-old scripture. This is going to work. No fucking way. 
Because it's what's hearing it that is the problem, not the what you're hearing. It's how you're hearing. You're hearing the good news as if you are going to get the good news. The good news is there's nothing to get because there's no one to get it. Yeah. People are trying to get nothing as a something. No, there's nothing to get because you are the nothing already. The smallest little mistake grows geometrically in time and space. Yeah. This is about not... It's clearly... I don't care about the descriptions of the void. It sounds like a place near Idaho or something. The void. I drove by it once. It's not an object. It's not a thing. Emptiness is not a thing. It implies the emptiness of all things, including this thing. (laughs) Oh, I forgot to apply it right here. Oh, that's why I'm missing it. <laughs> the void. I can't wait to get there. The vo- I, made it, I made a reservation. I hope they have room. There's nothing there. Oh, there should be a, a bed then. You know. No. The mind hears it in a certain way, and then everything gets objectified. Yes? It's made into something, and that's how it's disguised. Yeah? Because it's in our way of looking that we're blind to it. If you can just question who's looking, you'll see. But if you're waiting for that you to see, that's another form of self-centered looking. You can't get out of it because you've never been in it. You can't get out of an imaginary place. There is no self to escape from. That's why all the escapes or, or attempts fail, because you're trying to get out of an imaginary place. Yeah. What would happen if you kept applying solutions to an imaginary problem? Wouldn't that be the biggest problem? <laughs> Wouldn't it? It would be so disguised because everyone, your friends and spiritual advisors will be calling, yes, that's a solution. Keep them pl- applying it. Why isn't it working? Because you can't, you can't solve an imaginary problem. You recognize it. And then that's that. Yeah. When the problem seems real, there's a need of a solution. If the solution dawns on you, one of the first things that's revealed is there is no problem. And immediately, there is no point for a solution. That's the solution. You don't have to have a special little pocket for that special solution. There's no need of a solution. That's the solution. So this idea of of selfing, what it does, it implies, it infers, it it insinuates that you're the doer, you're the haver, and it produces a sense of being a someone, a Paul. So when an action happens through the body, there's a feeling it's mine, yeah? When a thought is held, it feels like I thought it, or it's about me. A feeling, definitely my feelings, yes? And people have a very difficult time Recognizing an action without the idea that there must be an actor. Who says that? An actor. Actions go on all freaking day that, have, that no one's ever been home. It's not like you finally vanquish the self. There's no self to vanquish. There's just a recognition, like this great Zen master Dogen said, to study Buddhism is to study the self. Yeah? To study the self is to forget the self. Why? Because when you study the self, you'll entertain it's not you, and once it's realized it's not you, you lose interest in the making of the self. Your interest and attention gets free from that bondage and now enriches your day. Instead of enslaving you in this day by yesterday and tomorrow, constantly being concerned about what's not happening, you're free from that, and you're actually right here where you've never not been. So this whole idea of working hard to get into a moment is seen as totally ludicrous because you cannot be out of a moment. There's not one moment you've ever been out of. But this whole idea of trying to get into the moment is how we act as if we're out of the moment. And how many have read the whole book? You know, how to really get in the moment. Immediately you want to get to 
Edition 3, how to really, really get in the mood. We want the advanced, the advanced get, I feel like I deserve a much higher level of being in the moment, yeah? And of course somebody will come here, these are all the hierarchical levels of being in the moment. I think you're down here, which means you've got to buy a lot of subscriptions to my book and my newsletter, and then go on the retreat. But then I'm up here, I'm on a very high level of being in the moment. Give me a freaking break. There's no being, you can't be out of it. What happens when you entertain that? It's done. The solution always has one quality that will last, will produce a lasting impression in time, and that's timelessness. You'll have a sense, this was not produced, it was never achieved, it was never made, because it's never been unmade. Yeah? It's been always available at all times, but I've been looking through it in time, and it's timelessness. The dawn is a, an instant recognition of this is so, was so, will be so, forever so. Yeah? But not by that, by, by realizing what I'm not. By seeing that there, why, I am not the thinker of the thoughts. If I'm not, I lose interest in them because they're not about me anymore. The me is the glue that keeps you going back to that dry well. Who here in this room, unless they want something from the person, let's say I meet a woman and I'd like to go horizontal with her, yeah? And I think she'll be the greatest person, and maybe we'll get married, have kids, my mind's just going off. And so I go out with her and then she talks for four hours about a cat, and I'm feigning great interest. I'm a, I'm a cat lover myself, you know? And, oh, yes, tell me about Biff too, you know? And I'm on this. And she says, oh, I really think this guy's a nice guy. He's special. Let's go home. We go home. We go horizontal. Next week we go out. She starts talking about cats. Bye. See you later. I got what I wanted, which was not a cat. You know, <laughs> you know that, that, that selfish interest would cause me to listen. Yeah? But if someone comes over and I'm complaining about what's not happening to them, they can't feel it, they can't see it, they're not tasting it. It doesn't exist, which is the clarity that they're exhibiting. Yeah? And they're bored stiff by me talking, oh, I'm, I'm so worried about that I will have cancer. And you keep saying, but you don't. You're missing that big point. You don't. But I'm going to. I really feel it. Give me a break. I'll do laundry, anything else than that. But the same... The same stuff going on, if it's held as about me, I'm totally interested in it. So it's not the movie you're falling for, it's the audience. You're buying it because you think you're the star of it. In Buddhism, they call it the cherishing of self. Yeah? There's a cherishing, a love for this little action figure of Paul. And we're just hoping beyond hope that one day, it's insane, really. Look at basically what we're confronted with every day. You've got a circumstantial and situational level. Yeah? You've got to have money, this or that, that and that. You're concerned in trying to manage that. Yeah? Then there's the physical level. You're concerned in trying to manage that. And you feel, and you're hoping, if I could just get it just right, everything would be great. Yeah? And then there's the emotional level, which you're attempting to try. And there's the mental level, which you attempt. And then the mental level has its own idea of the spiritual level, which is not spiritual, it's mental. And then you have that. And here you are sitting as the boss of all this, and you're going to try to get them all aligned, and if I got it all perfect, everything would be great. But what really flips you out is you can have, you have, if every day was a second, we'd be doing great. You know, oh, there goes Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, fuck it, I'm doing fantastic. Bring them on, Friday, Friday, Sunday. One second. But not, you feel great at 9 o'clock, and 9.01 comes up. 902 comes up, and these conditions change. You know, you're trying to keep these blocks all aligned, but they're on shaky ground. Yeah? And you're just all day managing in a fear of it not working because it hasn't worked. You know, it's not an unfounded fear. You are living based on a failed system, and it's going to fail. Yeah? So there you are. If I could just hold it. So 9 o'clock, people call me up. Oh, I had an awakening. 905, they're in a deep depression. You know, what happened? Yeah. They want to align something. They want something that cannot be stable to be stable. And they assumed if everything was lined up, I would be great. It's the biggest delusion of all. Because this place is not reliable. 
Yeah? But what seeing it is totally reliable because it has never come, it has never gone, it is truly like an open sky on a nice day with no clouds. Anything that appears in the sky doesn't affect the sky itself. This is what we are like. We are like big M mind. We are like that sky. Clouds come and go. Fourth of July explosions. You could have a Fourth of July explosion every day and it wouldn't rip the sky open. Yeah? Planes are flying through it all day. They never run into a chunk of sky. Yeah? Birds are shitting and they're never landing on the sky, on your cars. It rains, it just wetens the earth, not the sky. The sky allows everything to appear and move in it and have a sense of reality, yet it's not affected by any of it. That's what we're like. We are like that mind. We are like a huge camera, a huge camera with a huge aperture. A lot, a lot of possibilities, yeah? Huge, huge, huge. And we come upon a little small camera with a very small locked aperture, and we bend down and we start looking through the small camera, and we become identified with the small camera. So now this huge aperture is being shrunk down, not by itself, but by what it's looking through. And now it's defined its universe, its possibility, its spectrum, of joy and all of this is now severely limited and the aperture of self centeredness is locked. Yeah? So now here's this huge camera living really small, looking through the small camera. And all that's needed, not to start talking about how great the big camera is, because the small camera is going to be claiming to be the one hearing it. It's to see you're not the small camera and then suddenly, no time at all, you're seeing again. Big time. Yeah? It hits you like that, hopefully like a Zen bitch slap, and bam and you wake up to being awake, basically. You wake up to being awake. You do not wake up because you've never been asleep. You've been acting like you're asleep. You've been seemingly asleep. Yeah. But, in fact... <sighs> When something in recovery we talk, we have an acronym, false evidence appearing real, fear, one of them, all right? So false evidence appearing real. It doesn't say false evidence is real because it can't. It already has the nature which is false, right? But there's a magical thing that can happen. False evidence can appear to be real, but it needs a someone to appear to be real too. It can't, so, you know, you know what I mean? The false evidence needs to, uh, someone to appear to be real too. So if something really feels real and it isn't, where is it getting that sense of reality? It can't be getting it from other false evidence. It must be getting it from reality. Voila! We are the reality lending ourselves to things through an identification as a thing. And then those things are biting us in the ass, which we now have because we're a thing. <laughs> you tell me what else it is. How can something seem so real on a Monday and not be real at all on a Tuesday and then seem so real on a Wednesday? Did it change or did you? This Monday, I'm feeling pretty good. It's not a problem. Tuesday, I'm feeling bad. It's a huge problem. Wednesday, I'm feeling good. It's a problem. Get it, you know? Your role here, like in the course it says, lesson two, you and I are, give everything all the meaning it has. This is what's happening. All those meanings are coming from reality. Only reality could give meaning to anything because it's the only real, it's the real, it's the only real non-thing. Yeah? A thing can't give meaning to a thing. Yeah? But what's real can give meaning to the things to make them seem to appear real, to it. But it has to be disguised as a thing for the fall for it. And there's the identification as a body. You know, the Course says it beautifully. It's a diagram for every day, which is you and I are the dreamer of this dream. Yeah. We've given everything we dreamt no, we, you and I are the dreamer of this dream. We forgot that we're dreaming. Now, that's what interests me when I heard this. I said, well, how am I forgetting? Yeah, I, don't, I don't like blanket statements. I want to know how am I forgetting, all right? Well, how am I forgetting? Well, I'm forgetting by remembering self. 
Yeah? So when I'm remembering self, I forget that I'm the dreamer. And in that condition, I give everything I'm dreaming the power to affect me as the dreamt object. It describes every freaking day of every person on this planet, basically. You and I are the dreamer of the dream. If you're giving meaning to things, and they're not things in themselves, then I would say that's a pretty dis- good description of a dream, yes? So you and I are the dreamer of the dream. We forget that we're dreaming. The forgetfulness didn't happen one day in Idaho or Omaha, Nebraska, and then you've been tattooed with forgetfulness. It's a mental activity that goes on and on all day, listening to the thought system, that produces the forgetting by the remembering of self. So by remembering self, you're in a seeming state of forgetfulness, and in that state, the reality you are is given to things, and then that reality you gave to things bites you in your real ass. And then you bitch about it as a victim, oh, if I could only change this and this and this and this, you didn't see where the reality issued forth from. Not there, but here. You can't understand it because you think you're already something. I'm Paul, this historical action figure. I was born here, I did this, I did that, I can't share what I did here, and this and that. All that is the seeming identification that never can be so, but it can appear to be so to you. So wait, 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 wait. We'll have questions at the end. Because this is like cooking a souffle. Don't open up the oven door. Let it cook for a while. So here... (laughs) <laughs> so here <coughs> thought system yes so what happens you're here right now and yet there's thoughts about yesterday yes or well, let's say four years ago and let's say there's a thought about you four years ago in that thought how are you pictured in that thought system as a body right you have to be a thing to be thought about. No thingness can't really be thought about. What, when you're thinking about no thingness, you're thinking about a concept of no thingness. There's no thinking of nothing. Yeah? So here it is. So I'm, pick, I'm thought of four years ago, and when my head goes four years ago, it pictures me as a body. That's how it locates itself. And because it's me, it's interest, the interest and attention goes there. And now the thoughts circulate around that story of what I did or didn't do. And if I would have done it, everything would be great. It always assumes everything would have been great. If you had, if you had, done, some, if you had done something you didn't do, and vice versa, you know? Because it makes the suffering exquisite, you know what I mean? It does, doesn't it? Really. You know? The, the idea that things could be different make it terribly hard to, to accept what's going on. And it's a crazy idea because there's no truth to it. Yeah? So there you go. So now, what's happening? You're remembering self. Yes? The memory, you're remembering self. Where does the feeling of being the self happen? Now. Yeah? You're thinking about you four years ago, but the feeling is happening, is being produced now. That's the remembrance of self. All right? And now there's future, which is a huge open field. And the mind goes thinking about what could possibly happen to me, which is almost anything you can imagine. Because there's no, there's no re- real boundaries because it's not so. Yeah? That's why I always think it's so funny. Because there is something that's happening. Yeah? So there's what's not happening. Anything can happen what's not happening. But there is something that's happening that has one quality what's not happening doesn't have, which is it's happening. Yeah? Which is right now. You may like it or not like it, but this is what you got. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's, there's a lot of peace available if you just can entertain it. But so, here you are, you're thinking about you, takes it as a body, five years from now. Yeah? And you're concerned, of, I'm going to be destitute, you know, I'm going to be that, and this and that. And then the feeling and the contraction happens now. So this is the remembrance of self, and in this activity, we're forgetting what we are, seemingly. You can't forget what you are because you're it, but as this, you can seemingly forget your real name. Yeah? That's what's going on. So we're remembering self all day. What's what's the glue of it all is that it's about you, and that's what happened with me in recovery when I heard this message. 
and I was leading these workshops in, in recovery on the fourth step, and there was this one sentence, I'm going to throw this out for the people who are in recovery here. There's this one sentence that says, being convinced, which means to believe with certainty, that's the word, that self, the small s, I'm not talking about a big s, I don't believe in that anyway, but uh, the small s, so being convinced that self manifested in various ways, yeah, is what has defeated us. Very clear, very clear statement. It's separating the us and self. We're the us, and then there's a foreign installment, self. To me, self is like a parasitical movement. It's like I see alcoholism as a parasite. I see alcoholism as a parasite that affixes to the first parasite, which is self-centeredness, and amplifies it. It's like taking an acoustic guitar and plugging it in. So, you know, it makes, gets very, it can get really, really flamboyant. You know what I mean? But it's the same tune it's playing on, and what's holding the beat is the self-centeredness. Alcoholism would have no place to grow. It needs the petri dish of self-centeredness to grow on. In it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you see, where was I? Oh, I'm going to know self. So self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. Very clear statement. Yeah, very clear, isn't it? So he's just described the exact situation. This is what's defeating you, folks. Self. Not alcohol and drugs. That's, they're being used to facilitate the defeat. The drinking, the drug use, the drama, all of those things is used to facilitate the defeat, but it's not that. It's like the club that's not beating you. Yeah? You're getting hit with the club, but it's not, that's not what's hitting you. Yeah? It's this idea of being a self. So self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. Yeah? Being convinced of that, we will now look at its, selfs, selfs, not ours, selfs common manifestations. Okay? Not all of them. They didn't, it would have been a huge book, and we, all our books would lose interest. It's 164 pages, that's more than enough now. It would, have, it would have to be like 800 pages if you went in all the variations or manifestations. But manifestation itself is what has to feed us. Okay, you're clear about that? Now we're going to look at its self's common manifestations. Next paragraph says resentment. Resentment is the number one offender. It kills more alcoholics than anything else. And then we did another inventory on fear. Uh, yeah? The fear of not having what you want and losing what you got, shit like that. And then sex, to look at how we harm people in the pursuit of what we want. It's a pretty good, it's a very good topic to look into. And so, yet, when most people see this, when there's a resentment being expressed by self through this event, the, this vent, the little voice box here, says, It's mine, my resentment, my fear. That was what I'm my harming that person. Now, you're accountable for what the puppet does, but you're not the puppet. The puppet's been taken over. The parasite has taken you over and is using you for transportation, yet all of its effects, all of its manifestations, you keep claiming to be yours. That's the bondage of self. How are you going to be free from something if you're identified as it? It's impossible. And that's what happened in AA. This dawned on me, and I enter- as soon as I entertained, hey, I'm not that, the next thing which my mind could never get to, got to immediately, which is I can be free from it. I had, my life had been living trying to be free as a self, trying to get the self to come along with my master plan, trying to, you know, socialize the parasite, domesticate the parasite, do whatever, but it was always included. Now I have a new possibility. I'm not that. And then, with me not being that, I started to lose interest in the thought system. I didn't see them as my thoughts. I first saw them as alcoholic thoughts. Because I go to recovery meetings just like this. I walked in in the beginning, felt incredibly terminally unique, you know. A big, thick shell, like an M&M, almost, of, of, of uniqueness. And I thought, no one ever felt like I did. No one ever thought like I did. How could anyone understand me? I'm not like these people. No one did the heinous things I did. And after a few months, by just listening, I could only come to two conclusions. How did these people get my thoughts? You know what I mean? Because they aren't mine. 
We've all been saddled with the same tyrannical parasite called alcoholism. So then I realized, I'm not identifying with who you are, I identify with what's taking you over. Because I've lived under the same tyranny. That's why we get connected. That's why we laugh at the same things. Normal people flip out when they hear some of our shares. Because, what the fuck? Oh yeah, well, oh yeah, I did that so many times, over and over again. What? You don't get it? The commonality is we've been taken over by the same parasite, and it's not us. That's where the freedom lies. It's from self, not for self, or as self, or by self. It's from it. Yeah. And, that, and it's the root is identification as that. That's the first original dis-ease. Alcoholism is an, an adjunct or an affixation on that. It amplifies it, but it's not the root of it. That's why people get... Oh, I could go in, and I wanted to talk to some people here from recovery, but I can go on and on with it, but a lot was revealed. And then I saw, when every time I saw this word self, I saw it as something foreign to me. And immediately, I could be free of it. And, and, so, and hence it started to occur. I lost interest in what was facilitating the bondage of self. If you're not interested in the thoughts, they can't be used to bind you to the idea of being Paul. If you're not really interested in feelings as mine, they can't be used to bind you to this idea of being Paul. The seeing, hearing, feeling, not claimed as you as the seer, hearer, feeler, will just be felt as living, conscious contact. You'll be alive, finally. Yeah? You'll be alive. You'll be free. You'll have an immunity to what's not happening. So if you don't, if your attention don't follow the thoughts that go to the past, you can't remember the self. And if you don't remember the self, there isn't one. The self has no existence in and of itself. We breathe the seeming existence in it by our interest and attention to it. Because we're bonded as it. Super clear, simple, and then that's that. So you start seeing what you're not, and then that's that. You don't go, oh, now I'm going to start looking for myself. That's not it. You'll find out what you are by knowing what you're not. The only way you can find, if you are something, the only way you're ever going to know it is by finding out, because you cannot objectify it. You can't get out of it to see it. You're the seeing right now. That's the dilemma. People want to, it's like people come to these type of talks and they want to get it. They want to be there to get the message. But it's because you're here that you're not getting the message. <laughs> but so I want to experience my own absence. No, that's not available because you're absent. You're inherently absent. You can't experience it. <laughs> You're, that's the false presence trying to experience an absence. Just realize it's the false presence, and that's absence. And then you'll realize, then you find out what presence is. It's not an experience. An experience isn't enough here. You need to have something much more longer lasting, like states. You want to have a state of peace, not an experience of peace. You want to have a state of, of ease and comfort, not a day that it works out. Yeah? You want to have the idea of surrender as surrendered, as a state. Not something that you do, and then when something comes up that's important, that you take it back. You know? I can't believe the God we make up that we can surrender to and take it back at a drop of a hat. Yeah? <laughs> Who's the bigger God in that event? You are. And it says in AA, hey, first things first, you've got to quit playing God. First, you've got to notice what it looks like. If you can see it, you won't be looking from it. You'll see it. How do you think the problem persists so well? It's incredibly disguised as you. Every solution you go to, you bring it with you. This is a humble invitation. We don't draft anyone here. We're not going to give you, you know, all right, the next thing you do is use your homework. Nothing. You know? How many talks should you I go you go to? This one. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Entertain, entertain, entertain. Maybe entertain as the hearer, and then you'll get it, and you'll still entertain. And now the mind, instead of entertaining all these insane ideas, can you imagine look at how much you produce of anxiety thinking about what's not happening. 
It's pretty powerful because you have nothing to work with. You can't see next week, feel it, taste it, but you make a lot out of it by thinking, don't you? Could you imagine if you gave that reality to reality, what would happen? Find out. Give the reality that you are over to the reality that you are. Instead of giving the reality that you are over to this idea of being a someone and letting that someone be the distribution point and giving tons of meanings to tons of things all day. Like having a huge amount of infinite cash and you can't wait to spend it all day frivolously. Oh, let me think all day about what's going to happen. Everyone here is having a problem. It's not based on tonight. It's based on last week and next week, basically. See it. See what you're pledging allegiance to. See the head. If you're aligned with the head, the head values yesterday and tomorrow more than now. It's using now to think about yesterday and tomorrow. That's how it covers the now up, by there and then. It keeps you in a total state of distraction so you'll miss the point. The never-ending, pointless point that's always available at all times. There is a solution. There is no problem. Hence, there is no need for a solution. That's the solution. So this idea someone presented, you know, I love the approach. I love direct approaches, but they can be... I found, when I kept hearing these descriptions of what I was, I was claiming it as what I wasn't. The mental state was catching every fucking cosmic throw that was thrown, yeah? And making it into something. So I said, well, wait a minute, let's look at that. If I'm not that, let's see what can possibly happen. And what I saw, an incredible wealth distribution change, yeah? Tons of interest and attention came off this dead horse and came into the aliveness of this moment, yeah? I didn't have to make any fucking draw. I didn't have to draw it out and invest it. It did it naturally. I just got free from that, and then it got started enriching my day. And now I don't want to go anywhere, because where would I go? You can't transcend an imaginary place, which is what I was trying to do all with every shot I ever took and every drink I ever did. I was trying to get out of self, which I can't get out of because I was never in. That's why every drink you ever drank ultimately doesn't work because you cannot solve an imaginary problem. The self-centeredness will keep blaming you somehow. That's what it does. You've got to see selfing. Its first and biggest movement is claiming. It claims everything it's brought to contact with through conscious contact. Everything. Every thought it will claim as I'm the thinker or I'm the object of the thought. Every feeling, I'm the feeler. Every vision, I'm the seer. Every note, I'm the hearer. It will claim everything. Body, it's my body. Time, my time. Yes? Problem, my problems. That's its activity. It doesn't have a life, so it claims one. You're the event of living, and it's claimed it, and switched, did a switcheroo, and now you're living in interpretation one of time and of things. And you're dying to the sense of nothingness, but you're looking for it through the lens of time and things and as a time and thing. Yeah. Question what you are. When you realize you're not that, then the sense of timelessness will dawn on you quite easily. I'm getting feisty tonight. I'm ready to go. It's, a, it's just a humble invitation. If your solution doesn't seem to be working, don't look at the solution. Don't go shopping for another one. Just question who is it that has the solution. You see, see it. And then be done with it, you know. Just get on. And then, you, then you can be truly useful in a way because you'll be available and present. You won't see that it's circumstantial and, and, and situational or how you feel. It won't be based on that. It'll be the, it will be the baseline of obviousness. So I'm always available at all times. Yeah. Not because I'm working at it. It's because I, that's what I am. I am not that which is I'm trying to get there. I am that which it's trying to get to.
Any questions tonight? I know some people are dying. I don't like questions usually, so I'm just throw it out there. Because you know, a lot of times it's easy for it to turn into therapy. Yes. So the selfing gets its big foot in the door, and then you're talking from there. Oh yes, let's be helpful to that. Fuck that. <laughs> Go to the roots. Go to the exact nature of the situation, and don't move from there. And see what happens to all the situation that seems so fucking pressing and everything. When you change, they change. They're not there to change you. That's, we've given our power over to them. When you change, they'll change. We want to change them so that we change. It's not a wise move. Because you don't have power over that. But here, you, in our way, not, you don't even have to have a say. You are that. So when the mind changes, everything changes. Yeah? Because I know I, I have a, in my contract, I have to speak for over an hour and a half, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a little performing animal. Like that's and listen, I'd like to say for the people who are there, if you have any interest and you're in recovery, I wouldn't mind, I, I'll sit here all night and talk to you from the AA point of view, but it's not right to do it with a lot of different people. But I'm more than happy to speak or argue or whatever. I'm not into arguing because I believe for me to be right, you don't have to be wrong. And for you to be right, I don't have to be wrong. But I do want to say that it says, you know, people will come after us and add on to the program and let's open up to some possibilities, yeah? I would say. Yes? Can you talk about the difference between I and me? Yes. Well, the me is the special, it's the crowning of the of you as a special you by, a, uh, by attributing the me with the qualities of I. Yeah? And so the you gets shifted into me because of the sense of I moving through it. But the me totally forgets that it's that source and it takes itself to be the Alpha and the Omega. It's the doer, the haver, the this or the that. So the I, I would say, is spirit. Yes, that's what I mean. The I, in other words, here's all these yous, but the same I is looking at every one of us. Yes? Now, in, in your life, I'm always and never will not be a you. When you're seeing me as, a, as the I, you're seeing me as a you, a thing. Yeah? Everyone here, if you could, you need 8,000 more people, they'd still have the same experience of this as you. Hey, you, over there. They don't go, hey, I. Hey, I, get, that's my parking space. They go, hey, you. you know? So I'm a you, and I'll always be a you in your view, from the I that's there, in a sense. Yeah? Same thing, I'm I, looking at all yous. Yeah? So here's... One eye, in a sense, it's not one, but let's just use one eye, let's say looking out of all these different camera locations, yes, at all the use, okay? But what happens here is, each one of us, we forget the eye is what's looking, and then the mental process props up a false king, so to speak, and says, it's me. And now this you gets crowned with a special uniqueness called me. You know what I mean? So, I don't care how much you think you know me, just you, I beg to differ, it's me. You don't understand me. When I was in this program, this drug and alcohol program for two years, <laughs> two years, my, my managing life led me to the point where I had to be managed by other people. That's how it went. You know, I'm not managerial quality. You know? I shouldn't be running any show. So, <laughs> I was in there for two years. And I have to admit, I did a lot better with them running my life than I was running my life. Because they were never fooled. They never saw this as me. <laughs> they saw it as a junkie you, and they knew exactly how to treat that you to make it do better. Now, I was in constant <laughs> conflict with them because I kept seeing it from the point of view as me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm a special junkie. There's no junkie like me. <laughs> You can't, you can't apply what you apply to all these use to me. This is what we're all suffering from. I was at this one meeting, the lady's talking, she says, 
I'm so obsessed with self, all I think about is me. It's a common thing in here. And then she said, it's even worse, I think everyone else is thinking about me. <laughs> now, how she was implying it was wrong, but the statement was beautiful. She was implying that all of you are thinking about this me, but everyone in here is thinking about me. Yeah? It's the, it's the, the, crown, the crown of selfing is a you being adorned with the sense of having the attributes of subjectivity and crown me. Yes, that's it. The you doesn't produce the sense of me. It's the I. The I claimed, the I forgotten, the I owned as attributes I have, so now we think we're conscious. And even in science, they think the brain is producing consciousness instead of the brain facilitating consciousness. Yeah? Consciousness is being used, and by moving through the brain, it produces a human consciousness. When it moves through a bird brain, it produces a bird consciousness, yeah? Some animals see by smell. See? The seeing is just awareness, but it will be defined by the gate it moves through. So some animals see, just like we do with eyes, but with smell, yeah? So it's not the nose that's smelling, it's not the ear that's hearing, it's consciousness facilitating that, yeah? So there's the consciousness moving through the you, the mental process says, hey, that's me, yeah? I'm the seer, you know? It's, it's just funny. Let's say, I always use this, let's say I, uh, I ate a burrito, and I'm in, this, I'm in the, the false assumption that I'm the digester of my food. So I'm here, and I forgot I ate the burrito, and I also forgot the pizza I had last night. And it dawns on me, and I go, oh, i got to leave early. i got to go home and digest my food. You know? I'm, I'm backed up. And we're going to really get the results if I don't get the whole thing. You know what I mean? To another orifice, you know? <laughs> so, and everyone would laugh. Ha, 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 you're not digesting your food. You know? You're not, uh, you're not pumping the blood. You're not beating the heart. Yeah? You're not doing this, you're not doing that. But there's a subtler process of the body, which is thought, and we believe we're the thinker of it. I'm not, I can't take a shit when I want to, most of the time. Don't have any power over it, really. But suddenly, I'm, I, I claim to be the thinker, and therefore the thoughts now have a special allegiance. I'm allied to the thoughts as mine, yeah? And I say, these are bad ones. And these are, you never sit over the toilet and that's a bad shit. You know, look at, that's not, that, I don't want to tell anyone about that one. That's not good. You're not looking at the body product. You think, but the mental product you think is yours. I'm having terrible, dirty thoughts. And therefore, if I have enough dirty thoughts, that implies I'm a dirty person. You see how it facilitates the bondage of self? All day. All day it's going on and on and on, assuming, inferring, pointing, and we're just lazily under its sway, and then we're bitching about it. It's like unbelievable. It's like that old story with the beggar in the, at the gate of the, of the, of the city. And he's been there for 20 years begging, and all these people give him money or don't give him. And one wise sage comes by and says, look in your pocket, and then walks away. And the guy's too proud to do it, but when he gets back to his little hovel, he looks, and there's a huge diamond in there that's always been there. He just never looked. He was rich all along. But was he accessing the richness? You are inherently awake, but are you experiencing, or are you traveling in that awakeness? That's the change. That's the dilemma. It's not like you're not awake. We all are. But is it actualizing in your life? Is it having an influence here? Is it, is it giving you immunity to what's not happening? Because it's so obviously so glorious what's happening. Watch it simply. Look at the thought system. What does it value? It values yesterday and tomorrow. Do you want that? Look at the thought system. Let's say you're having a good day. How long does it last without being mentally disturbed? I don't deserve this. She's going to find out. You know, I did a terrible thing three hours ago. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be happening. But the same head, if you're having a bad day, says it's going to last forever. You want that to be the theme setter of every day? Shorten the quote so-called good and lengthen the so-called bad. 
oh, you're going to get loaded. You're going to look at porno. You're going to do something to get some fucking relief from the bondage of self. Yes? You want to get rid of the bondage of self. No, you don't. You oh. don't want to get rid of the bondage. That would be bondage of self. You just want to see what does it. Okay. Yeah. If it's... There's going to be a huge sense of something when you see what you are calling you is manufactured. It'll have a huge... It'll have a huge disruption quality in what you call your life, your linear story of an action figure. When you see that it's structured, manufactured, reinforced, constantly referred to and implied, you realize anything that's getting that much advertising mustn't be there. Yeah? What's here doesn't have to advertise at all. Let's like, look at Budweiser beer in America. The shittiest beer, terrible beer, has never knocked in. They spend tons of advertising, but it's the same shitty product. Yeah? Something that's really good never has to advertise, because it's really good. Well, what we are doesn't need to advertise. What we're not is constantly advertising that we are that. It has to be. The only way you can have a feeling of self is that it's generated. There is no self to generate its own feeling. It has to be remembered. It has to be implied, inferred. What do you think memory's doing all day? You're re-feeling, you're rethinking, you're rehashing, you're re-re-re. You're doing again and again and again. And you're not doing it. The mental process is doing, 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 doing. And when you keep listening to it, the doer, 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 doer is produced. The feeling of being the one who's having this thought. Jeez. It's called slavery. Yeah. Where's the pity of karma? Hmm? Pity of karma. It's a theory. It's just a theory? I don't know. I don't believe in it because I think the body has karma, but that's not me. Yeah? That's true. Yes. In this world, it's like a Ford, you know? There's Fords, and so karma is about Fords and Chevys and Buicks, you know? And so if you drove crazily as a body, then the next time you come in, you'll have more accidents, you know what I mean? And that will be the karmic effect the Ford's going to get for making all those illegal turns. But why does it mean or imply there's a you in there? Why is it that a feeling can't be sort of held without a feeler somehow being there. Or like, if you didn't do the action, I didn't do the action, then some bigger being, God, did the action. Why is our logic so starved to have a doer, a thinker, a hearer, and a feeler? Because its whole basis is based on that. The false sense of doership is where all guilt and shame rests. You don't let yourself off the hook because you really believe you did what you did when you were under the influence of alcohol. Yet, in our step one, it says you were powerless over it. You were powerless over drugs and alcohol. So, you're dancing with the gorilla, you're going to stop when it wants to stop. Yet, we still have tons of guilt and shame about that behavior because we still believe we were the doer. Even though we think we get this, this sense of powerlessness, we don't get it. Because if you really got a sense of palaces, you'd be accountable, but you would not be responsible, and you would not have guilt or shame. What I came to the realization of, I would have done what I did to you, to anyone, unless you physically could stop me. That was it. I was taken over by a parasite. It was using me for transportation. Yes? There's a TED Talk came out. I'm going to give a plug to it. I'm really into this parasitical idea. Because I see alcoholism as a parasitical movement. Yeah? One parasite to all these different hosts, that's why we share common traits, because they're not ours. <laughs> they're just parasite traits. Yeah? Okay. So there's another one. Now they discovered that it's much more extensive in nature. Because now, now they discovered there's this thing they call toxo, and it's in, it, it, I think it gives birth or something. It can only, it can only like uh, reproduce. In a cat, in a, I mean in a cat, yeah, it's the only place. It has to be in the cat belly to reproduce. No other animal will do. But it finds itself in other animals. So it's in other mammals, and it's in rice and mice. Rats and mice, yeah? And so when a rat and a mice that's been taken over by this parasite sees a cat, they run towards the cat. 
It overrides the basic instinct of the mice trying to escape from the cat. It overrides that like that and causes the rat and the mice to run to the cat so that the cat will eat it and the parasite gets to its destination. Because it can't drive. The parasite can't walk. It's, it's limited by being where it is in the, in the bottom of the mouse, but how it overrides that, it jacks into the little mouse brain and says, you're going to run at the next, you're going to run to the next cat you see, and pronto, baby. And so they do. And they keep talking about things as parasites, but they miss the next level. There are non-things as parasites. There are mental winds, which alcoholism is. You cannot take an x-ray of alcoholism. You're not going to see it. Yeah, but you'll see its effects on the organs and on things, but it won't, you can't see it as a thing, it isn't. But it's a parasitical movement, yeah, and it takes you over and it uses you to do what it wants to do through the alcohol and drugs. It doesn't even need that, yeah. It will do it when you, you're stone cold sober, you'll still be crazy. Yeah? So the parasite moves you to go what it wants to go, to get what it wants to get, and all the while with self-centeredness, you're claiming every one of those movements as yours. Oh, I'm, why am I going to this bar again? You have no fucking control. Yes? You need a power greater than it. That's your only chance. That's what it says in recovery. The dilemma is powerlessness. Why is it a dilemma? It's only a dilemma when you're exerting power you don't have. Because what's going to bite you in the ass when you're trying to manage and control is powerlessness. You don't have the juice. Yeah? You are, the mental assumption is you have the juice, therefore it seems logical to try to control and manage things. But you experience powerlessness because things don't go your way. People that you want to like, you don't. Yeah? You're constantly running into the, the, the re- frustration of, and discouragement that nothing's working out the way I want, yet the stubbornness of that persistence is very huge, and you'll keep thinking you have power. And they say in recovery, the dilemma is powerlessness. You have to find a power greater than self. End of story. So that's what I see as the parasite. And there's tons more story. You have that candida... Candida, it's a little fungus in your stomach. A lot of people suffer from it. And it likes certain, it's fuel, and it can't go to Entenmann's or go to a bakery. Its fuel, though, is like flowery, sugary stuff. It produces sugar out of it. So it causes the host to really love bagels, let's say. And then you have a huge story about your great bagel lover. It's all promoted by the fucking candida in your intestines. You're thinking it's you and making a huge story, have pictures of bagels in your house. I'm, a, I'm the greatest bagel lover. You probably wouldn't even like the bagel without the candida in your intestines. But all the while, the self centeredness is unbelievable. Constantly claiming and reasserting, you know what I mean? So here we are, suffering the effects of this parasite, and we're claiming all their effects, they're mine. Oh, that's my self pity. That's my. You, how are you ever going to get out of what you can't be in? It's frustrating. It really is. There is a solution. And if someone say, well, who's it frustrated to? Fuck that. It's just frustrated. Yeah? There is no you. If there's, if there's a clarity, there is no you, you don't have to point it out through every sentence someone says. No, there is no you. No I. Don't use the I. Give me a break. You miss the whole spirit of it. You get caught in the fucking letter of the law and you miss the spirit of it. The spirit of it is free. Freedom. Immediacy. Oneness, incessant oneness. Not produced and not unproduced, just oneness. Yeah? Yeah. So, any questions? Yes? So, in your experience, when you make that transition to seeing something and experiencing that state, the something doesn't go away. No. It does. The interpretation is still presented, but the audience is left. You know what I mean? So the talk is going on, but no one's there. Your interest and attention has been freed by a simple, simple recognition. I'm not that which I was so interested in. That's all. 
Just like, you know, I always use this example. There's a girl that's at a meeting in the other room, and I'm really interested in her. Once again, I think she's going to conceive my children. We're never going to get divorced, and, and all this. And, you know, so because that's what makes it so, oh, yes, she's, done, she's it. I've got to get that. So I'm at a talk, and I'm trying to share, but people see that I'm distracted. So one of them comes up and puts a book on the table, how to lose interest in a conversation in another room. I page through it. I agree with the principles, but I can't help myself. My, my mind's very interested in her. Yeah? So suddenly, I finally hear her speak, and I'm waiting at this, and she says, I really like that guy Kevin, and my name's Paul. What happens? I lose interest immediately. And I don't have to take a three-month retreat or learn a technique to retrieve my interest. It just goes right, <laughs> right where? Where does it go? Right here. Like it, because this is the only place it is. Yeah? Now, so what happened? So that showed me very simply why I'm interested in all this stuff is it's about me. Go to the me that it's about, and if you're not that, your interest and attention will either quickly or slowly move from that dead carcass and come and, be, and enlighten your life. I call it a stabilized statement called traveling lighter. That's what will happen. It's not an experience, but it will infuse your experiences with something. Yes? This is not a path to illumination, but it will illuminate whatever path you're on. Like I'm on the path of recovery, it illuminates it greatly. Yeah? For me. It brings the spirit that I was seeing as something else into my life because I'm bringing it in. I'm not going to get something. I'm coming in to express something. Yeah. So it's not a path to illumination. There's plenty of those. It's a, it illuminates whatever path you're on. Business person, not business person. Slacker, you know, mother, this and that. It's not defined because you're not looking for the light. You're shining light on where you are. It's a different take. changes everything. Because when you change, everything has the possibility of changing. Because you're giving everything the meaning it has. Yes? So, uh, you were saying, that in a sense, you were saying the solution is, look, notice the me, which means all the ways that the we well, something? notice the structuring because you can't notice the me. There's yeah, no one there. Yeah. But, but notice the me. Yes. Yeah. 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 Notice what, it, what I'm not, and that's the same thing. When you when you recognize what you're not, it's all done. Now you just rest in what you are. What I'm not is me. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So when you're not that, that's that. What's obvious will become obvious. And then if it's obvious, rest. If you seem to forget, come to a talk. Yeah? Because you can't forget, but you may have to go through the pantomime of remembering, you know, of being triggered to remember. And there are a lot of ways to do that. After a while, though, you'll outgrow the ways and that it will be self-triggering in a way. Because you won't forget. You'll realize there's no way I can forget what I am. Yeah? I mean, <laughs> there's no need to remember it either. You are it. Yes? So it becomes truly reliable because you're not involved anymore. <laughs> and therefore, it's difficult to have a sense of ownership because you don't own it. Yeah? So I come to these talks because I've never shown up, basically. Because if I was going to do a talk and it was based on me, I would have found many reasons not to come. The trip, you know, this and that. But it has nothing to do with me. It never has. Since the day I did my first uh, workshop in recovery, people say in recovery, and I disagree with this, that you have to have it to give it away. I believe if you're willing to give it away, you'll have it. To tell you the truth. So that's what I did. I put myself in positions to be used that I've been thoroughly used for a long time. And the hose finds its true meaning by the water that's moving through it. Yes? So, I've had downloads, I'm open up to that, and something comes through to get a point across. Just the, I'm just like the medium for it. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. 
It's not my message. It's nothing, I have nothing to do with it. I don't sit around thinking about it when I'm at home. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't. I, have, I don't have a get ready room and a get set room and then a go room. I just walk in here and it goes like this and I'll walk out of it because nothing's changed. What was there before the talk is here now and will be here later when I leave. I never, you know what I mean? There's very little difference in my days in a lot of ways. The bass line is the same. One note with a lot of riffing on different notes, but the one note is always underneath it all. Like a... All, you know, always. Yes. So, what moves isn't you. The mental state moves all day. Yeah, it comes this way, it gets... Through aversion and desire, it moves. Through interest and lack of interest. But what you are is never moved, never blank, blinked, never looked the other way, never took a break. Yes? Never. It's always available at all times, right where you are. With no requirement necessary to meet it. You, you are the one who holds all the requirements. It's like I have a story to fill up the time. Knocking on heaven's door. Yeah. So here's heaven. I have this urge to go to heaven, you know, and I've done a little meditation. I have patchouli oil. I have a nice, you know, some beads. I got my loving gaze down pretty good, you know. And then so I go in thinking I can make it pretty easy. So I go in the door. And it, this was always disconcerting. The door opens up immediately. Man, God fucking fast. You know, considering he's everywhere, where can he show up to, you know? So the door opens up and I say, God, can I come in? And he looks right at me and says, Paul can't come in. So it sort of bums me out, so I decide I'm going to practice more. So I leave, I join a monastery, I do this, I do that, meditating 12 hours a day. And I wait until I feel like I'm ready, I should be able to pass the test and knock on the door. And the door opens immediately, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> there's no time or somewhere in that space. So, so I go, can I come in? I can, and he says, Paul can't come in. So now I go say, fuck you. And I go out and party and drink and debauchery and everything like that. And I get washed up on the shores near the door and I come to and there's a realization. So I crawl to the door, knock on the door. God opens up and I go, can I come in? And he says, Paul can't come in. And I walk right by. Yeah? He wasn't, he, it wasn't personal. He was just stating a fact. A Paul, a Mary, a Sue can't come in. I could have walked in at any moment, yeah, because I'm not that. But as long as I was identified as that, I excluded myself from fucking heaven. Yeah? As soon as I realized I wasn't that, I walked right in. Exactly. Because I wasn't the... He was saying, Paul can't come in. The only way I could take that to mean me is if I was identified. I said, yes, as soon as I saw that, that's that. Yeah? Requirements are where you're sitting, not in this, not in every, not in this. He says, no, when has this shunned you? Really? When has this presence, this space ever shunned you? When? When were you exiled? Where would you go and everywhere? Where could, where could you find a special somewhere and everywhere? Where can you be connected or disconnected in everywhere? How can you be close or far in everywhere? How can you have, buy a ticket from a travel agency in everywhere to get everywhere? Yeah? I mean, the absurdity of it should dawn on us, yeah? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean... <laughs> Or just continue what you're doing. That's fine, too. That's what mind wants to do. It's fun. It's fun looking, really. You can get frustrated and think you should be better and doing this and doing that. But, you know, you'll get it. Mind will get exhausted with this little pantomime and then it'll just change and something will crack open and that will be it. Yeah. The Course says it, and the Course of Miracles says it in this chapter, I need do nothing. It's a very cool chapter. So he talks about all these ways, yeah, like contemplation, yoga, meditation. And he says, because it's the mind's intention to be free, it will manifest the freedom through these things. But they're going to take a long time, maybe. Yes? And then he says, if you're reading this book, 
maybe the course is for you, and if it is, it's basically here to save you time. Because everything is going to lead to the same realization, I need do nothing. Yeah? So what, what I'm saying is, all your somethings have total luck to be nothing already. Why not start at nothing? Yeah? <laughs> Start at nothing and stay there, and then watch your head try to make it something all day. And when it exhausts, there it is, nothing. And nothing's the gift that keeps on giving. Everything comes from nothing. Everything doesn't have a land to stay, a lake to stand on, unless it's standing on nothing. Nothing is the reality. We're seeing the wrong picture. The negative is where the picture comes from. The picture does not produce the negative. The positive can't go back to the negative, but the negative can be seen as the positive. Yes? Nothing is the mother and father of everything. All of these things are, are born in, in the womb of nothing. Yeah? Yes. We've got it. Because we're a thing, we've relegated thingness to a very lofty position, and to do that, we de-emphasize no thingness. We don't recognize or sense the space of this room, which you and I have a sixth sense. You can sense space. You can sense this space in here. You can almost, like, see it. Yeah? You can start feeling the presence of rooms and places and spaces, because what was unimportant will become important to you. When you're weaned off of the thingness, no thingness will become important to you. You'll be keen on it. You'll be keen on the noteless note underneath all the notes, you know, or the silence that wraps around every sound. There would be no sound unless it was happening in silence. There would be nothing that could be heard if it wasn't ha happening in a space of silence. But how little is that acknowledged? How many notes do we follow that we hear, and how little do we follow the silence that they issue from? Well, first of all, there isn't in anyone, but it is an, it's an unspoken agreement that's being voiced and inferred all the time, yes? In this seeming population of people, we all want to stay people. <laughs> we don't want any person to be an unperson. <laughs> okay, it's, oh, you can have a wonderful experience, but you're not that. No, no way. No, you're you, you know? Yes, it's very, very strong pressure here. The mental state is like a weather front, very thick. Yes? We take it to be the sky, but it ain't the sky. Yeah? Very thick. And it doesn't and it's and it doesn't lend itself to be broken through, so to speak. Yes? We tend to take it as being a real ceiling and then we never question it. Yes? Yes. We try to tolerate and make do under the, under it. Yeah? Go against a lot of innate drives and Things get totally, so much mental mutation occurs. So many beautiful children seem to appear as really twisted characters over a few years. You know, it's just an amazing event here. But, you know. Everyone's going to see me as me. Like, if I die, I'm never going to experience it. You are, yeah? If you know me, you'll have an experience of Paul dying. I'm never going to have it. <laughs> there won't be any Paul to have it. <laughs> because there never was a Paul to have it. Look at your head. Your head is on a delay. Yeah? So you're waiting for an interpretation because the conscious contact is sort of being redacted or blocked up. Yeah? So you're not aware of the livingness of seeing, hearing, feeling, but you are aware of the story of her hearer and her seer and seeing. Yes? So you're on a time delay. Okay, so you're about a half a second off. So the moment we're thinking we're in is not the moment. Yes? It's a mental moment uh, that's bookended by yesterday and tomorrow, you know, or last second and the next second. 
Yeah? But we're on a time delay. Any, any movement in time is a delay from timelessness. Yeah? So here we are. So let's, I always think of this because let's say you've been practicing your whole life to really be present. Like you want to be there at, the, at your time of death. Yeah? So let's say you're sitting there and you're meditating, meditating, meditating. And then uh, I always think of this, another aside. Someone's in a hospital bed. They've been listening to their thoughts their whole life. And the mind has a real sick little, little vindictiveness. The last thought that you have is, I really blew it. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine all these years of living? The last, it finally gets anointed with, you really blew it. Boom. <laughs> so here you are. You're trying to be present to be at that, witnessing that last moment. Yeah? But you're on a time delay as the interpretation. So suddenly the body dies and you're waiting for the voice box, which is of the body, to proclaim, hey, you just died, Paul, but it's, you're never going to hear it again. <laughs> so you missed the bus, basically. You were planning, how to, I'm going to be on the bus that day, I've got the ticket, I'm going to be there when that door opens. Oops, I missed it. Because <laughs> you're not going to be there. You've never been here. What you are has never not been here. What you are will never be here. You'll never be able to align yourself with exactly what's going on because you're an afterthought. You have to be remembered. You know how much shit can happen between that little gap of what's actually happening and what we think is happening? Look. Look at what the mind has gotten up to. <laughs> Fucking incredible. Can you imagine if you give it a whole life? Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> well, you know, we have another meeting, so if you want to go through a couple more rounds, let's go. Because <laughs> I like exploring, though. I do. Because it's thrilling, in a way. Just to have a possibility that's, that's possible, you know? Not another, like, uh, you know, path or a journey or a practice, but something prior to the practice. In my experience, the freedom is prior to the bondage, not after the bondage. Yeah? You have to see the inherent freedom to look through the bondage. If the bondage is taken to be real, then the freedom that will ensue won't be. So it's seeing that there was no one ever to be bound is the freedom from bondage. It's prior to it, not after it. Yeah. So, do we know where the address is, where we'll be in tomorrow? 1045 uh, Dupont Street, which is a Dupont and uh, hope to see you all there. What time is it going to be? At the same time, 7 to 9 tomorrow, and uh, Saturday and Sunday, there's two meetings starting at 11. Yes, and so what happens is tomorrow night we have one question, Saturday because there's two sessions, two questions, and then two questions Sunday. So there's five more questions to be had. <laughs> we could take a moment of silence, but let's not. You know, it's, it's funny. You are exactly what you are now, exactly. You know, it's nice to be quiet, but that's more for the body and the and the mental state. It's never for what you are. It isn't. You're trying to... And it's good. They need what they need. And sometimes when they're not disturbed, that will be undisturbed by you. <laughs> so you'll sense it, but, you know, whatever. You're never going to, you know... I just think when you sit and you sit and you're thinking you're dropping in it, you've been in it the whole time. Yeah. It was here before I sat down. The story of me sitting down was an afterthought. The event of sitting down happened way before I knew it. Yeah? <laughs> so what you are is here already. Not... <laughs> not to be discovered, discovered here, but it's discovering here. You're the discoverer of here, not... You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's it then. Well, Are you welcome? What? Could what? I just say something about the weekend? If anybody wants to come for the Saturday and Sunday uh, talks, um, Denise uh, would really appreciate if you could go out lunch, so that just bring a little something so that it's not all on her to do. And you can don't have to come the whole time. Right. You can come for one of the talks or whatever. And, 
If there's any problem with money, just don't t- just talk to the person. All right, then I'll demand more from you. <laughs> yeah, but if you want, just come. You know, no problem. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.